Okay, so it's the 5th of July. It's 4 a.m. right now, uh, 4 p.m. right now. And I've challenged myself to create a SAS project under 24 hours. Um, yeah, sounds like a brilliant idea. It is a brilliant idea. So let's, without further ado, let's go. Hey, it's me from the from the future. I've realized that my sound quality was absolute trash, so I'm going to make a voiceover. So the goal of this project is to transform an image to a painting. For instance, you upload an image of yourself, and I will ask uh, some image model, ChatGPT in this case, to transform this image into a painting with a certain style. For the text stack of the project, I'll use Lovable in order to start the project and to scaffold the entire architecture. Then I will use React, Shatzien, Tailwind. Uh, for the backend, I'll use Superbase for the cloud function and the authentication and the cloud storage. And for the agent after Lovable, I will use Juni AI which is the coding agent of JetBrain. Okay, so this is what we are going to be generated. An image based on another image with a painting style. This is an impressionism painting style, I guess. I think I've said in the style of Monet or something. So yeah, this is what we're going to generate. So I start by creating a workspace in Lovable and taking a subscription in order to have more credits. Why Lovable? Because it seems to me that it was the best tool in order to scaffold the project and do the UI and the UX of it. I know there is also a tool like V0, Firebase Studio or something. I start by creating a uh, a prompt where I give the global ID of the project and I try to, to say to Liverpool to use Vue.js but it doesn't work and it, it generate me a React uh, based project. I wanted to try because I prefer Vue over React but then I said to myself well, fuck it I'm going to use React and React is really popular compared to Vue.js so the AI is more able to write some React code, so I believe that's why they do this. Then I generate several different lovable projects with slightly different prompts in order to see which generation will give me the best UX and UI. Then I just select the one I think is the best and I start uh, to build on top of it. Once I get a version that I really liked, uh, and I think that I could be able to build stuff on top of it, I start to reprinting it, so I will enhance it uh, to suit my needs. So now it's been like two hours since the project has started and I already see the first limitation of the AI and Lovable. For instance, Lovable created my Superbase function in order to generate the image, but it uses the DALI API, the DALI model, instead of the GPT 4.1. And if I ask uh, Lovable to use GPT 4.1, it doesn't know how to do it. So I will have to modify the um, cloud function by using the documentation of uh, GPT and OpenAI. Does it break the challenge? I don't know. It's up to you to decide, but yeah, I would have to just manually uh, debug it uh, with myself and Claude. The prompt is not bad. Like the image that it create, it's pretty good. Mm, I think we should be able to see the original image. I should be able to click on it and it open the model. And inside of the model, you can see the original image and then the, the generated image. 
um, this could be very interesting. It's been almost uh, three hours now, three hours now that the challenge has started. And we already have something quite interesting. Uh, we have the authentication that is working, it is pretty simple, it's the bare minimum that is, but it's working. We have a credit system, we have our image generation uh, thing, I don't know what the like, the share button is for, but anyway. Um, so yeah, let's demonstrate how it works. I just imported my file, say that I want an impressionist um, theme. You can create it to generate the image. Now the UI is not perfect, of course, but this is stuff that we can fix at the end because more and more I ask, I think the less and less he will be capable of doing things. So I prefer to mess up with the UI at the end. I think I would have also to fix the prompt a bit because there is too much randomness in the image generating. Uh, for, inst for instance, this is not close as what I wanted because it generated, um, like it's not exactly how I look. This is not perfect. When I click on it, it should open also open the model. Now this is what I've been generated. So yeah, it's pretty decent for something that is not, is just made in three hours. Especially that uh, the login things work. Pretty interesting. So right now I'll take a break. I'll go climbing a bit. And then I'll go back uh, tonight and see if I improve or if I go straight to the bed and wake up early into my morning to finish up the project. Uh, I still have 21 hours, so I think we can improve the product a lot in like 10 hours or so. So yeah, that's it. Three hours later. Welcome back. seven hours and a half well not really because i took a break of three four hours so this is where we are it's pretty okay i mean we can see our generation we can download them perhaps i should create a button to just edit them again uh next step tomorrow the big step will be to uh make the payments uh, working with border.sh and probably create a FAQ section. That would be the big step for today. But now, right now, I'm going to sleep. We will continue tomorrow. We have like 16 hours. That's not a lot because I'm gonna have to sleep. So I better have to work a lot this morning, tomorrow morning, to just set up the entire credit system. And I will see you tomorrow. The next day. Okay, so it's me next morning in the Starbucks. The goal of this uh, morning was to uh, put the payment system in place and the payment and the credit system in place um, and put the website into production. In order to do the payment system, I've used Polar which is, I believe, built on top of Stripe. Now, why I didn't choose Stripe, you may ask. Well, I wanted to use a merchant of record. So I could choose to use Lemon Squeezy or Paddle or Polar.sh. Now I choose Polar because, I don't know, it was looking cool. And Lemon Squeezy was, since Lemon Squeezy has been bought by Stripe, 
Uh, I think there is a lot of problem, people experiencing problem on it. So yeah, I choose Polar.sh. I could have used Paddle. If I've used Laravel for this application, I would probably have used Paddle. I think using Polar was a mistake in this challenge because the AI uh, don't know the documentation. I think if I have used Stripe, it would have worked directly. I've really struggled to put Polar in place because the AI, I have no clue of the documentation of Polar. If I've used Stripe, it would have been extremely easy, I guess. I think the AI could have one shot the entire payment feature. But no, I had to debug a lot of things, correcting the webhook, checkout page, etc, etc. It took me actually quite some time to do it. Now it's time to build a nice uh, domain name for the project. I have brainstormed with ChatGPT in order to find the best name and domain, and I've ended up with pick2art.net since pick2art.com was uh, not available. Now it's time to deploy the application. I will deploy it on my own VPS where I have all the small project on it. In order to manage this, the deployment and the domain name and etc etc databases, I use a tool called Dogploy, which is kind of like an open source alternative to Heroku, Flight.io. It's like Kulify if you know it. It allows you to manage your VPS for you, basically. So it's pretty pretty good. Even though I had quite a lot of time to create the Docker file and the Docker Compose to just deploy the application since it was the first time I deployed a React app. Uh, I guess if I've used Verso, it would have been way easier, but anyway. Okay, so it's been like a few hours since the challenge is over now. And I wanted to be do a small conclusion about this. I did not respect entirely the amount of working hours since I just worked for like 10 to 12 hours, I think, at max uh, on 24 hours challenge because I went to sleep and I went to climbing and I went to eat, etc. etc. First thing I wanted to talk about is that the beginning with Loverball was extremely easy. Um, Scaffolding the project is pretty easy with tools like Loverball. I've only tested Loverball so far. I haven't tried V0 or anything. Loverball was pretty great, especially for creating the design. I would have spent many more time to just handpick the element, the UI element, the UX element from Shadzien or anything, and to customize it to my needs. I think Loverball do a pretty good job in terms of UX and UI. You have to uh, submit. I, I've, I've created like different version of it because I wasn't really convinced by the design at first. So that's why I had to do many different tries. After that, you can you can pretty much uh, develop functionalities like your main functionalities pretty easily if it's not like extremely complex. But after a while, you start to feel that the tool, like the lovable tool. He has a hard time understanding what he has, what he should do, and probably the 
the most um, biggest drawback is that sometimes it erase functionality that it created before or it modifies stuff that it shouldn't modify it and you lose your job basically you lose what you've done so at this point I've decided to just download the project on github and start to use my coding agent which is junior AI it's not that great to be honest it's developed by judgment it's okay-ish it's not you cannot use mcp with it so it's biggest drawback i guess you can't upload images and stuff but otherwise it did the job pretty well now i will do a brief uh, overview of the product so it's entirely functional uh you can submit your image you can create an account submit an image you can submit your image and choose your style. Now this is not this is suboptimal in terms of UX and UI because you don't see you, 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 what the picture will look like. Um, let's say modern heart. And you click on that, it will generate an image and take a credit out, out of your uh, credit, out of your uh, database. Now the database uh, schema with Superbase works extremely well. I was surprised. Uh, I just had to change the name of the table. It was pretty okay. For me, the challenge is uh, a success because the website works. It looks okay, like all of the functionalities are, are, are okay right now. The only thing that could be improved is that, of course, having more uh, pages. Like this is, this leads nowhere. Um, adding some social network. Uh, changing the icon over there uh, same thing for that I have the page privacy policy etc but it's there's nothing in it I can show you there is only like blank space uh, like template of what we should see inside of a privacy policy um, and you see it's pretty okay it's pretty great for me I'm so I'm okay with that let me know what you think about it, but I think it's decent. So if I wanted to make a perfect product that is 100% like feature ready and stuff, it would probably take few other days. Because what you think, you finish the project by 90%, you're actually only at like 50% of the project. That's a lesson that you have to learn when you do a project and you think you it's over. Well, it's just the beginning, because the detail, it, the detail takes too much time. By the way, the website is online, I don't know if I've said that, but you can check it and you can even try it. Don't judge if there is bugs and stuff like this, because it's extremely fresh, but well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, give it a like and see you probably in the next one. Peace.